Okay, good morning everyone. Hope everyone is great. Uh, in this hall today, uh, the general theme is building data and AI products. And the first talk of the day uh, is um, Vanya Takic. Uh, Vanya is group community lead for advanced analytics and AI working at Raiffeisen Bank in Austria. Uh, he has 15, more than 50 years of uh, banking IT experience across multiple business areas and has held various IT leadership positions. And he'll start his talk uh, as soon as we see a short video. Good morning, everybody. Thanks a lot. It's really nice to be here. Thanks for joining. And um, I'm coming from Raiffeisen Bank International from Vienna, um, from the Advanced Analytics and AI tribe. And I'll tell you a little bit about like a case study about building data culture and building the culture to enable data science in Raiffeisen. So those things are usually not very connected and they should be stronger with organizations, with enterprises, with corporations. So taking in this people component, the human touch, um, and I will tell you how we try to do it in Raiffeisen and hopefully you get some tips and hints about what you can use in your own organization. Um, Saying a little bit about Raiffeisen Bank International. So um, we're a leading bank in the CE region. We have been there over 30 years, um, working internationally, but also locally. So being a collaborative bank, we are actually very much focusing on, uh, on independence, on regional development, and focusing not only on retail customers, also corporate customers, financial institutions, markets. So really a broad universal bank. Um, we do have teams and uh, also when we do advanced analytics, it's not a centralized organization. Um, it is a highly decentralized structure, which has a lot of advantages, which takes a lot of local flavors, puts them together, but also brings some challenges. So not just technically, not just organizationally, but also from people and culture perspective. So you have to be really conscious and work on keeping the people together in order to deliver something meaningful for the customers. Um, and our mission, our mission to transform um, continuous innovation into superior customer experience. So we are or we have been a very traditional institution, um, very, or very organized, very structured, um, very well respected and known for our um, cooperation and collaboration with, uh, with our customers. And continuous innovation is a part of our organization which has been gaining momentum in the last, I would say, five to seven years, more and more. And we have been learning, I have, I'm happy to be on that journey together with, with RBI um, to bring continuous innovation as part of our daily business, as part of our daily life. And it's not so simple as, as you would expect if you have a traditional organization and you want to implement continuous innovation and use data to make decisions and to support customers. Um, so where I'm coming from, I'm coming from the advanced analytics and AI tribe. So it's a multi-department, cross-functional um, team of people from various business areas, from IT, so really multidisciplinary, coming from all walks of business, working together um, to build data-driven solutions in order to, in the best case, foster superior customer experience, sometimes not directly, sometimes through um, building systems or optimizing our internal structures and the way how we do things in order to be um, smoother, to make smoother processes, to be able to support our customers better. So um, we have started as Advanced Analytics and AI Tribe in RBI um, about three years ago. So before that, we had pockets of advanced analytics, business intelligence, um, business analytics in the company, of course, in various areas. Um, but we have not been doing a concerted effort to bring advanced analytics and AI in focus. And we did say a couple of years ago when we started with this new vision to become the most recommended financial institution and this continuous innovation part of the, of the bank, that's when we said, actually, yes, um, data and analytics should be in the center of our transformation. And we are transforming various areas of the bank. So we are in the middle of, of a big transformation of this huge organization, and it takes time. 
So what I will be focusing on is how to enable culture, how to enable people to accept this transformation, this change, to embrace it, and then to contribute in order that we can make it happen. Um, we are an international team, so we work not just in RBI in Vienna, we work also with colleagues from our network banks in the countries, so across the region we collaborate and cooperate with all of them um, on not just exchanging experiences, but also really working together to build solutions which we can use across different countries. This was, honestly speaking, one of our, one of our pains, um, this decentralized structure and individual approach in each of the countries has brought some complexity to the organization. So everybody was building systems, everybody was building solutions that they could use locally, but, but we had um, a lot of problems when it comes to reuse, when it comes to scaling, when it comes to implementing solutions, and now especially when we want to use data and analytics to implement solutions across the whole, um, across the whole area where we are active in. Um, talking about this, this buzzword of driving transformation to a data-driven organization, I've heard already yesterday um, a lot of talks on this, so it's, everybody's talking about uh, becoming a data-driven organization. Um, we have heard already from, from the other speakers what that means, how data strategy is really important, um, how you are able to to optimize your internal processes, business processes, how you're approaching customers differently, but um, in the end, it is about taking a step back from what you are doing and really thinking about, okay, how are we, how are we using data? What do we use it for? Um, where can we become better? What is the focus? So where does it make sense to start? And where does it make sense to scale? And what do we want to do on our own? And where do we, where do we need support and partnership, let's say, with the, with the ecosystem of consultants or, or vendors that are supporting us? Um, in the end, this challenge of uh, being over 100 years old and doing AI, and as we heard, even quantum computing in, uh, you know, in the first POCs, um, we have accepted this challenge. And I think we're on a very good way to, um, to make an impact on this, in this area. Um, when I talked about transformation, actually transformation does need to happen on, on various different levels. So we are in the middle of uh, not just the data transformation in RBI, we, are, we have a digital transformation. So we are moving our business and following our customers to the digital channels, to social media. So really supporting them in, this, in the digital world and trying to make it as seamless as possible not forgetting our customers who are more traditional, who really still like to go to the branch and they, they have to be supported as well. So we should not forget about this social component of banking where we do have to support all of our customers regardless of where they approach us. But on the other hand, on the other side, we need to be able to have systems so well connected that we can recognize which customers would like to be approached in which way, just as one example. Um, we did an additional transformation, which we called an agile transformation. So I was partly involved in that one as well. So where we change the structure, um, where we change our hierarchies, where we change the way how we operate, how we do things internally. I will not talk a lot about that today. Um, and then the data and analytics transformation as, as, another, as another component. So it is a really huge change. And to make this change happen, it's not enough just to focus and say, this is our strategy, this is the way we're going, and then let's make it happen. You have to consider different, various different components. An important one for us um, in, in Raiffeisen was definitely technology. Being an old bank, um, having a lot of legacy, having a lot of unconnected systems, um, and wanting to do continuous innovation on this kind of infrastructure is a mission impossible. So there is a move to uh, move to cloud. There is a move to uh, embrace open banking, um, to use open source technologies, also even to contribute back to the open source community. So we are doing some steps in this area of, of technology, um, opening up uh, our banking e ecosystem through APIs externally, but also using APIs internally to connect our systems and to communicate better. Um, going to business, we have to change the way 
how our internal processes are structured. We have to make sure that we know how our processes work to identify inefficiencies and to address them where it makes sense, to automate where it makes sense, and also to change our structure from, let's say, a few years ago only, we had a, um, a very divided system of operations, of running the bank, of building new things through big projects, through massive projects which took, which took years to execute. And this, this cannot, if you want to do continuous innovation, you cannot have this disconnect. So you have to connect the innovation with the daily business. And finally, the last part of it um, is people. This is also where I like to work, um, to work with people. You have to embrace change and people do not like to change from the, from on their own. So they need a good reason why they need to change. They need to embrace that this change is for something better, that this will bring them new opportunities, that they still talking about our employees within the bank, that they will still have a job, that it still has a meaning. So being able to embrace this change, being able to, to grow, learn new skills, um, fail a lot. So when you do innovation, you will inevitably fail. And this is something where we did have to change our culture in Raiffeisen as well. Failure was not something that was readily accepted and openly discussed in the bank. Um, and we have changed that in the last few years. And this is a really important thing that you are allowed to try things in a safe way and fail and learn something from it. And to build, let's say, to build the, the organization, to build the structures in such a way that this innovation is possible and that it happens even organically and not always steered from the very top. Um, open cooperation, we are working a lot now, not just within ourselves, within the different countries, within the different departments, but also collaborating with fintechs, um, collaborating with uh, academia, with universities. So doing a lot, of, uh, a lot of innovation in this area and really opening up our, um, yeah, our structures and our way of working and trying to, trying to become more inclusive. Um, internally, working across small cross-functional teams, involving business and IT, working together on building solutions is a really important step. And then finally, not to forget education, and this is what I would then focus more on. Um, I think that you cannot expect that people are changing just because somebody tells them that they need to change. You have to educate them. You have to bring them these new skills. You have to bring them the understanding, the rationale, the reasoning of what it, what it really means and how they can contribute. So education on customer experience. What is customer experience? Why is it important for us? Who are the customers? In such a huge organization, in such a huge bank, Customer is sometimes very far away from what you're doing in your daily business. And being able to understand that what you do actually does matter somewhere along the chain to a customer in the end who wants to use the service is really important. And shortening this path is not an easy thing to do. But at least the awareness of customer experience and the importance of it is something that we work on. Innovation, educa educating people on innovation is also important. So those are all the things that don't directly have, uh, have something to do with, with data, with data science, with analytics, but they're really important cornerstones in the overall picture. So you cannot just teach people Python and expect, okay, now go and build models and everything will work fine. If the rest of the organization and the customers are not ready to to accept this, to embrace this, and to make it part of their daily life, then you will fail. Um, and then, yeah, finally, data literacy and, and data science education is something where we are focusing on, and it's just one, one, of, the, one of the parts of, uh, of our efforts. Um, maybe a little bit about myself. Um, I am leading the advanced analytics community in, in Raiffeisen Bank International. Um, it's a community of practice, and we are very strong with building communities for various different areas in the bank to connect people, to exchange, to be able for people to learn from others and to be able to contribute back with something that you did, with something that you're proud of or somewhere where you failed and you want others to learn about it. 
So this advanced analytics community is a, is a group of, uh, let's say, 50 um, core members across, across the CE region from all the countries um, working together on bringing data science, advanced analytics and AI closer to the rest of the organization. So we do have advanced analytics ambassadors in the countries who are active, who are trying to promote advanced analytics to our business colleagues, people who are not aware of it, who are not aware of the potential of the capabilities that are there. Um, and we do this through various different means. So we are organizing workshops, um, we are organizing webinars internally within the bank, uh, meetups, not just internal, but also bringing uh, speakers and bringing colleagues from other industries, from other financial institutions, from academia to talk about this, so to bring it closer to people. Um, publishing newsletters to tell people what we are doing, why we are doing it, how we are trying to change the bank is something that you can think about. It really does make, it, it makes a small impact, but it is an impact that is that is then noticeable over time if you keep doing it continuously. And finally, let's say the, the thing that I'm here today to talk a little bit more about is our Data Science Academy. So this is our in-house education program on data science. It's part of the overall data literacy movement that we have in the bank. In data literacy, we try to um, teach people across the whole organization about the importance of data. Everybody in the bank, all the employees, not just our customers, are producing data on a daily basis. They have to know how this data is being used, where it's being stored, how will it, how will it be valuable for us in the future, or how could it become valuable, um, how we are processing data to learn, also, and not only about the technical parts, and not only about the process, but also about the implications, so to learn about the regulations, um, compliance, um, ethics, where we can and where we cannot use certain types of data for our business. Um, so what we did is we started a, three years ago with a very basic program for the initial group of, of enthusiasts who wanted to learn data science. And this was, let's say, a really hardcore data science program focusing on, on technology, focusing on Python, focusing on, on cloud, focusing on really so modeling, pipelines, things that, that you would expect if you are a data scientist. So this is what I need. But then we saw that this is really not enough. Yeah? So we have to expand. So what we did, we tried to organize um, dedicated workshops with, uh, with the Viennese University for our C-level um, executives um, to learn about data science. So they had a, a two-day crash course on data science, on data and analytics, on modeling, really to understand what, what it is about. And this was, this was good, but it's not just then the managers. You have to go through the whole organization, actually, if you want to, if you want to make a movement that is sticking. So we said, um, let's start at the beginning, something where we make an educational path for everybody and people can take as much as they need. So what we do is we offer the two basic courses online to everybody in the bank, to all the newcomers of the, of the bank, um, to be aware of data science, where we teach really basic concepts, where we teach them about what data science is, what is a model. We, they, they learn the vocabulary. They learn about different ways of using data, um, not really going into details, not really going into anything technical, just giving them really simple examples. Um, then on the next level already, they learn a little bit about theory. They learn about statistics. Um, they learn about the model results, they learn about visualization, um, they learn about confusion matrix, matrices, um, which is confusing for a lot of people. But when they, when they hear it and they know it somewhere in the back of their mind, then once when a data scientist comes and shows them a confusion matrix, then they know, aha, okay, they, yeah, I heard about this. I know what it is. I know how to read it. It's important, like we are, we, in a data science community, we are living in a little bit of a bubble. And it's important to, to break this bubble and to include everybody else so that they can use what, what we are producing. Um, contributor level is our third level, and this is the first practical one that we have. Um, we, we do it for people in business and people in IT who are actually, in the end, directly contributing to the data science projects. So they are either preparing the data or they are using the results of the models 
and they have to know how the models were built, what they mean, what do the results mean, how they can interpret it, and how they can improve it further. And not just that, but also going all the way to the beginning, what are some ideas? Where can we use data science? What part of my business, if I'm a business person, if I'm a relationship manager, how can I improve the way I do things through data? Because the data scientists somewhere sitting in one of the, in one of the departments, maybe they don't have the connection to this business area. They don't know that there is a problem there. So really making sure that people from different parts of the organization are able to come up with ideas was helpful for us. And then, of course, going all the way to the, um, to the professionals, to the, to the data scientists and our data engineers and machine learning engineers, um, being able to, to contribute and educating people who would maybe like to switch from their current position to become a data scientist. Um, there is also such strange people here. Um, learning about advanced techniques, learning about advanced modeling, um, learning about how to use our cloud infrastructure, um, how to use Python, how to use R, um, learning about the different libraries. So building their own pipelines, working on artificial data sets in a, let's say, Kaggle-like style, um, trying to build something which is then focusing on, on, our, on our business, yeah? Um, and going all the way to becoming a use case responsible person. What this means for us, use cases are a hypothesis. Those are good ideas where we want to use a certain data set or combination of data sets in order to change something in the bank, either to optimize a process, either to bring additional revenue, to improve something in, in how we are approaching our customers and how they work with us. So each of these things is a use case for us, like a mini project where we start from this idea, we try to get the data, we try to prototype really fast and iterate and try to build a solution that works and then deploy it somewhere and use it in daily business. And it sounds very simple, and each of those steps has its challenges, and we teach people how to make use cases, how to build teams, whom do you need there, how are, um, how are different ways how teams can work together, how do you lead a project like this, because it's not like a classical software implementation project, there is a lot of research, there is a lot of science in there, and for example, as we learned the hard way, um, if you hire 15 or 16 data scientists and put them together in one room and give them a business problem, nothing, nothing good will come out of it. You, you do need additional profiles for that. Yeah? So building cross-functional teams from business, IT, data, analytics, analysts, scientists, and all of them together working on something that produces value. Um, and then beyond doing specializations, so with external um, companies with external experts, bringing in the experts, learning about the latest that is out there in the world, using the latest uh, technologies, the latest libraries, and experimenting and, and yeah, doing a lot of innovation, basically. Um, maybe just shortly, so what we are trying to do is how we try to, to mentally structure it. So an ideal unicorn data scientist a person who, who knows, who has very deep technical knowledge about data science is not uh, somebody we can easily implement or easily integrate into the organization. They need a T-shaped skill set. So this is how we structured our, um, our uh, education. So we start from the very basics in the middle, um, basic principles, basics about our infrastructure and how we do things, then deepening it sort of in the, in the vertical on BI, visualization, Python, different libraries, um, building data science models, building data science pipelines, and then extending it into cloud in general, cloud technologies, different options that you have there, um, how to build use cases, and then even going down even further to unsupervised learning, deep learning, um, NLP, visual recognition. So all of these things we have within the curriculum for certain people. Like not everybody has to learn everything from there. So not every employee has to have the full skill set, but at least for our teams, it's important that you have people who, who can cover parts of it. Um, and then, yeah, on the, on the edges, so going from the 
really technical stuff, so software engineering practices. <coughs> what we learned is that also data scientists are not software engineers and software developers. They do build really nice models that you cannot use in production. They don't run well. They don't repeat well. They're not retrained easily. Um, so they're not monitored easily. And we learned this also. The, so everything that we learned, we actually did it the hard way. So we tried, we failed, and then we said, OK, we have to improve something. Maybe not the, the, the best way or maybe not the quickest way. It took us a couple of years. But I think we have, we have learned a lot on this journey. And I would say, if you have a way or if you have somebody who can help you to accelerate this journey, that's really good. But also doing it this way, so learning on your own mistakes, is really good if you have the structures, how you can learn from your mistakes and how you can improve. Um, so that's about our um, okay. So that's about our our data science academy and what we try to teach. But maybe just now switching a little bit focus into how it works together. Then in the end, so those people that finish the programs that work together with us from business, from IT, um, they work then in agile cross-functional teams, and this is a typical life cycle of our of our use case. Of course, it's not that simple. It's dirty uh, working with data. If you have ever worked with uh, with large amounts of unconnected data. Is, is hell sometimes and takes a lot longer, especially if you have to take into consideration what I said earlier, the regulations, the compliance, the ethics, so all these components. Getting data actually in the hands of data scientists is, is bloody work. And it takes a lot of time and it's at times very frustrating. But still, we, we do need data in order to work, so the magic cannot happen without data. Um, the modeling part is, I would say, 10% of, of, of a use case life, lifetime. So actually, the, the nicest part is the shortest one. And then after you build a good model, after you train the good model and put it in, in test, put it somewhere live, um, the other difficult thing is the, is the last mile. So putting the models in production, actually having an environment where you can run them, where you can ingest data and get some results out. And also, this is not easy, and it's, it's often overlooked, not just in, in our case, not just in the, in the RBI, but also when we talked um, to different industries, to different companies, um, they all seem to struggle with, with the same problem. And I think we, sort of as a, as a collective of, of different organizations and vendors and providers, we are learning and maturing sort of together on, on this journey. And it's really nice to, to see that. Um, maybe finishing up, so just giving you a few examples of the things that we do or that we did build. Um, those are things I would say some of them may be a year or two old. But we are working, for example, on optimizing cash in transit. So trying to solve the problem of uh, how to refill our ATMs across, uh, across a country. So what is the best strategy? What is the best route that, uh, that the truck should take? How much we should fill up the, the ATMs through tailored campaigns, so not carpet bombing our customers with, uh, with marketing campaigns, but really choosing which of, the, which of the campaigns are suitable for which customers so that we don't spam them too much. Um, doing text recognition and NLP, so optimizing, for example, um, the mortgage process where you do have to submit a lot of papers and being able to support our customers and our colleagues in the, in the back office to process this data quickly, to process the documents quickly and come up with useful information automatically. To anti-money laundering, so compliance, fraud detection, we did some use cases there, also quite nice, successfully. Um, chatbots, voice bots, conversational AI, um, social media banking are things where we also um, are active. And then doing some research stuff, which maybe will never um, go into production, but still it, you have to allow people to have some fun and you have to allow people to try new things. So doing things like video recognition um, is also something that we did in the past. We don't have a productive use case out of it, but we did learn. So maybe sometime in the future, it will come in handy. Um, 
And not just that, we are researching technologies of tomorrow. So if you've been here yesterday, um, our quantum computing community is one of the things that we do. Um, virtual reality, augmented reality, so virtual branches, which might be coming in the future in the metaverse one day. Those are things that you have to start investing in already now and not waiting until everybody else is doing it and then you, you step into it. That's not how you create customer, superior customer experience. Um, finally, there is a lot of challenges, of course. Um, so not to just say, you know, the nice things and how cool we are. Um, I already told you about legal and compliance and regulatory. This is something that is our daily business. We know how to live with it, but still it, it, keep, it keeps us, it slows us down a little bit. Um, market dynamics, so being there um, with, the, with the people, with the organizations, trying to stay ahead of the curve sometimes is not easy. Having data when you need it, um, seamlessly integrating and operating the solutions is something that we're still learning. We're getting much better at it. Um, and then finally, finding experts or building your own experts um, is, is always uh, a problem. Yeah? In the end, the whole transformation takes time, but you have to start, as I heard already um, yesterday, you have to start with small steps, you have to start with quick wins, and don't forget about the people, don't forget about the culture, and to involve everybody in the organization to do it. Thank you. That was it from me. Uh, does anyone have a question for Vanya? Okay. Hi. Hi. Great talk. Thank you very much. Uh, one question leading back to the people. Mm -hmm. um, how would you and I mean a really solid practical advice, how would you advise me to uh, convince someone that was doing something successfully for 100 years that they should change and why should they change and why should they change now? And why should I trust you to give me something to do new when you already tried it and failed? Because I am facing those problems in my company. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how would you give me uh, some really practical advice uh, what to do or what not to do? That would be it. So one thing that comes to mind, I mean, you could do <laughs> a lot of things. Uh, one thing that, that worked really, really nicely for us uh, was, uh, was, again, a series of workshops. So there is no way around it. You have to go out and talk to people. So there is no slides. There is no executive decisions. There is no strategies that will bring you there. You have to bring people live, one, not one-to-one, -one, maybe one-to-many, and discuss with them and hear them out and, and try to convince them and try to, to make them change their mind. So that's, there is nothing you can do to change their mind. So what we did is actually not related now to the, to the data transformation, but what we did is a series of workshops on innovation and why we need to innovate. And uh, there were exercises there which are really useful, like imagining the future. Yeah? So how is the future looking like? People are really buried in their, in their daily business. They don't have time to think about five years from now. So taking them out and really putting them you know, on, a, on a physical timeline and saying, okay, we are here now as a bank. This is the business that you're doing now. So travel you know, in the future, one, two, five years, 10 years, 20 years. How is, how is your business looking like then? Think about what you will need. Think about you know, what's working. Think about who are your customers in, in 10 or 20 years, like your kids, if you have senior executives, how they will use your products, you know, how they will do business. And then from that, so open, open their, you know, their horizon a little bit and then try to make them think how, what, what would they do? What would they do differently? So I think without that, you cannot really make a change. Cool. Thank you. Hi, Vanya. First of all, thanks for the interesting presentation. Uh, on the slide about uh, advanced analytics community, uh, you mentioned the grouped backlog. So I was just wondering uh, what that is and uh -huh. just practically how do you handle, you know, uh, distribution of work uh, 
and letting other teams know what other teams are working on and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So yes, I, I did skip that point. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for noticing. Um, the group backlog is an idea that we had uh, a couple of years back because we noticed that uh, uh, the different business areas and different teams across the different countries are working already on use cases. So they were not waiting for us from the from the headquarters to come and say, do data science now, you know, and these are the things that you should work on. They actually started on their own. So what we said is uh, we have ambassadors in each of the countries. They are connected to the local business. Um, they are aware. So we had like awareness sessions with the senior management again, you know, approaching them directly and personally and saying what we do and why we do it and what it might change in the future, how it might help them. Um, we built a group backlog of, uh, of use cases and we keep it up to date not, you know, not on a daily basis, but let's say on a monthly basis, we have an overview of what's being done in the countries, what are the new ideas, what are they trying out, um, with some really basic information, so not a lot, because people don't have time to put in a lot of information, and we don't have, uh, our processes are not so automated and optimized that it pops some, sometimes when somebody is starting a new use case, it pops up in some system and you see it on the dashboard. So it is a manual effort that people have to put in, but there is value out of it. So we can see that, for example, in Albania, somebody is starting a new use case in the corporate area for their corporate customers, but we know somebody in Russia already did something like that, so we can connect them and they can exchange and maybe already use some of the results. It's as simple as that. Yeah? So having a, a, a database which is easily searchable um, that, you can, that you can use and going through it regularly, which takes time. Also, that's one of the things that I personally do and I love to do is then talk to people from those countries and say, okay, what, what did you do? What did you finish? What are you starting? Where do you have problems? Um, do you have any questions like for the, for the other ones? And then every two months or three months, we meet all together and go through it together and then discuss it, what we could do. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Yes, yes. I will pick up. So thank you. Really, thank you for the excellent presentation. Draga Mikicic, I have only one question. Uh, so where did you, during the transformation that you were talking about, where did you invest the most of your time? And what was the most difficult or difficult activity uh, that you were focused on? So, mm. thank you. Well, it, it is exactly, so w where I spent the most time is, is reaching out to people and, and spending time, investing time into explaining them what we are doing and not doing it through some broadcast uh, email to 500 people just saying we have a new initiative, people read that, they forget it. So making like a personal connection is something even in huge organizations still works and you have to use it. So I think that's, and that was the biggest challenge also. So like you said, convincing people that it does make sense. And even if we do fail, there is enough success that we can do more and it, we will have more and more successes as we go on. Um, last question, I guess. Uh, first of all, great presentation. Your colleague yesterday also had a fantastic one and you also saw you guys from the bank uh, do, do know what you're doing. Um, I have a question. I work in a company that's heavily focused on the data and data warehousing, go data governance, etc. And when we work, let's say, with the people like yourself, you understand what you're talking about. And then you have to make a business case and explain to the business users why to do that. And you know, they ask you for uh, PL sheets, for I don't know, return on investments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And for these type of projects, sometimes it's really hard to do that because you know the real value shows up when something like COVID hits and you really can't predict uh, this one. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that you had a CEO workshops with the Vienna University. I was wondering, was this something that really uh, fast forward the all initiative? Because let's say after those workshops, the CEOs really understand, let's say better what you're trying to do. And they did understand better uh, how it can, uh, you know, save you money and, uh, and time in the future. Or it wasn't really the case. and. People like you pushed it through. It, it, it definitely, it for sure did help, but it didn't change the world. So that, that was like, if you don't get to the, in a big organization, if you don't get to the middle management, you're not making a change. So just the C level is, is not enough, maybe in, in very short. 
but and data is definitely still one of our biggest problems. So data management and, and mm. getting access to the right data very quickly is something that we struggle with continuously. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your great presentation.